A rainbow painted crossing in Gisborne's main street was painted over in what's been called an act of hatred and division. The act comes after Destiny Church protesters clashed with the rainbow community ahead of a drag queen storytime event at the local library. Destiny's church say uh, you can expect more planned protests to come. We will hear from members of the rainbow community. Evan Hastings District Council's cancelled today's rainbow storytime event amidst public safety concerns. It comes as yesterday's event in Gisborne drew dozens of Destiny Church protesters. Those protesters also vandalising Gisborne's rainbow crossing. Rainbow Storytime's Daniel Lockett, also known as Erica Flash, and Sunita Torrance, who goes by Coco Flash, joins me now. Good morning to you both. Morena. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for having us. How disappointed are you both that the event has been cancelled? Yeah, really disappointing. Um, it's sad because what we do is really needed and the people that come along absolutely love what we do. And so it's a real blow to the community. Um, and I mean, it's a blow to us because we love what we do. Um, so yeah, really disappointing, but we can understand in, in some ways. <laughs> For our viewers up and down the country, can you just explain what the aim of the event was? So Rainbow Storytime sessions um, have been done by us for about seven, six or seven years now. And it's as simple as reading books of inclusion, acceptance and bringing joy to people and places that don't typically get our brand of um, happiness, kindness. And um, it's something that a lot of our libraries sought out from us. We're the ones, they're the ones that book us. They're the ones that want us doing these sessions in their libraries. <laughs> and we're happy to do it for them. When you see the protesting, how does that make you feel, given that you are talking about inclusion and diversity? I think there's a lot of people out there that misunderstand what it is that we're trying to do. And a lot of people that protest and do turn up to these libraries against us haven't actually been to any of the Rainbow Story Time sessions that we've done. You know, we hold living library sessions, which are for adults and teenagers plus, so they can get an idea of what we do. But most of the people that protest have never come to even experience it for themselves. So we understand that most of those people just have a, a lack of knowledge, but the problem is, is they're not willing to attempt or try to understand it or even experience it for themselves. Yeah. So how surprised were you both that the Rainbow Crossing was painted over? I mean, what was going through your mind when that was happening? I think that was probably, that's the worst thing we've ever had happen to us in response to our Rainbow Storytime sessions, you know, like the very thing that we do is promote acceptance and um, kindness and to almost be silenced, especially during Pride Month mm -hmm. with um, Gisborne having rainbow flags all down the street and they've all got rainbow flags in their shops. So for them to block off traffic and stop cars from driving down their main street just to paint over a zebra crossing, a rainbow zebra crossing is is actually so much more than just a paint job. It's telling us that we are going to be silenced and they're going to do anything they can, whether it's legal or not, to shush us up, basically. Mm. Yeah. And there was a standoff that we watched that was being filmed as well between the Rainbow community as well as members of Destiny Church, who they say are protesting to protect children's innocence. What do you make of that? Are they able to hold their differing views? It's a funny way of doing it, that's for sure. Um, because, you know, all they're doing is um, intimidating the children that we're wanting to come along and the families. So um, it is counterproductive, I believe, that they are, are doing this kind of thing. Um, there's nothing to protect the children from. We, all we want is to promote kindness and to teach um, kids that, you know, be kind to that kid that might be a bit different or whatever, you know, it's, it's, that's what we're promoting. Whereas they're trying to say, no, everyone has to be black and white and you can only be within those squares. Mm. And we just had footage just playing of it. Were you both down there and just talk me through what it was like? 
Um, it was definitely um, a sight for sure. You know, we're not we're not foreign to um, protests. Mm. We've had a few start to build up as things have gotten um, crazier in the world. And it was um, it, we, we were very prepared for that to happen with the amount of heat that we were getting online from this particular group. However, it was amazing to see that the group that was counter protesting was almost double the size of the group that were protesting us. You know, and I think the main problem is is that we are giving people an option a choice to be able to come to these story time sessions it's not something that's getting forced onto people and what those people are trying to do is they're trying to take away that choice from parents from people from kids from <clears throat> any person even teachers that aren't a part of any specific group they just want to come and learn so we're not taking choices away from their communities they're taking choices away from our communities so yeah, what is the mood um, now like there in Tide Afiti? What's the mood like with the Rainbow community? Well, yesterday was a success. It was beautiful. Um, they failed in what they wanted to do in cancelling us. It didn't happen. Um, we had people standing room only up in our session while another group were downstairs continuing the counter protest, singing the Waiata. We could hear it all. It was beautiful. Um, and the session was, it was a beautiful time and people really appreciated it. Um, after the others had um, gone away, they brought everyone else into the library and we went down and, and met with them all and thanked them and um, told them just to keep mm. being strong and, and fight for their own rights. And um, it was just, it was actually really special and it's probably one of the special times we've had. It's so much more than just a rainbow story time session. And that's kind of why, even though we understand, that's why it's disappointing to have sessions cancelled because what cancelling these events means is that we are giving in to a group protesting and throwing um, threats of violence and aggression out there just to get this, these events cancelled because they feel like it and they don't agree with it and they don't see eye to eye with it and cancelling something like this means that it's going to light flames and people to be able to do it again for whatever they seem fit really if they don't agree with something you can expect them to protest again and i think that's why gisborne were amazing because they stood their ground they didn't back down and hopefully in the future with more resources and the other areas we will be able to do the same thing yeah we're not we're not stopping <laughs> <laughs> yeah not stopping love it uh, coco and erica thank you so much for your time this morning thank you daniel thank you thank you all right, how can I should Destiny Church then be made to pay for the Rainbow Crossing cleanup? We'll ask Labour leader Chris Hipkins next. Can we talk about the Rainbow Crossing in Gisborne being painted out, the story time being cancelled? How concerned are you about the actions of the vigilantes like this? Well, I mean, painting out a rainbow crossing is an illegal act of vandalism. Um, and so I'm sure they need to be, I hope that they will be held accountable for that. Nobody has the right to go and start painting roads and painting pedestrian crossings. That's a matter for local authorities and Destiny Church, I'm assuming, did not have permission to do what they did. So it is an illegal act of vandalism and it should be treated accordingly. I don't have a problem with rainbow story time. Um, I think it's a bit of fun. Um, you know, kids enjoy it. Uh, and I really think that you know, ultimately it's up to parents. If, they, if parents don't want their kids to be involved in it, they don't have to be. Can I ask you, hate speech laws were not passed under the previous government, your government. They were watered down and then it was dropped. How much responsibility do you take for that then allowing these sorts of groups to flourish and to feel like their actions are not punishable or that they are accepted by wider society? Well, Destiny Church's actions this week have been illegal. So you don't need to change the law because they're already illegal. I mean, it is vandalism what they're doing. Sure, um, they protest they as well. And protest is that. not illegal. Well, and, and I don't want to live in a country where protest does become illegal. Yep. I think the fact is we have a right to free speech in New Zealand, and that means that people can be offended. It means that people can vehemently disagree with each other. Um, I vehemently disagree with a lot of the anti-trans sentiment out there, with, with pretty much all of the anti-trans sentiment out there. I think it's discriminatory. I think it's objectionable. I think I should be free to say that. I'm not going to say that people aren't allowed to say the things that they're saying, but the best answer to that is for them to be vigorously challenged on that and I think it's our responsibility as political leaders to do that and that's exactly what I will continue to do. Do you feel comfortable with where our current legislation sits then that it doesn't get revisited anytime soon? 
No, I don't. I mean, it's the reason that we refer it as a government to the Law Commission. I do think that there is some further work that needs to be done in this area. It was actually highlighted by the Royal Commission around the terrorist, uh, March 15 terrorist attack. Um, but I don't want to proceed in a way that, it, that this itself becomes a very polarising political debate. And so that's why I, as Prime Minister, made the decision to refer that to the Law Commission so that it can be dealt with in a, a, a more objective and an impartial way. They can present advice to the whole of the Parliament and then political parties can argue about what should happen. But I think getting you know, a debate around free speech um, up that is polarising, that splits parties, that is presented as an attack on free speech, I think that's actually going to set the debate backwards rather than deal with what is a legitimate issue that's been identified. Labour leader Chris Hipkins, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.